Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's October 18th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First things first, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and five stocks on the move this week within the world of waste, gas, and energy. As of October 18th, 2024, Amatis is currently trading at a value of $3.03 per share. Total Energies is now up to $64.75 a share. Invitec Biogas has reached $31.80 per share. Waste Connections now sits at $182.58 per share, and GFL Environmental ended the day at $41.55 a share. But first up in the news, an update to our coverage of Hurricane Milton from last week, as it was reported that tens of millions of gallons of wastewater flowed into Tampa Bay waterways during Hurricane Milton, with the biggest spill being reported 20 million gallons into the Manatee River in Bradenton. Justin Tramble, the executive director of Tampa Bay Waterkeeper, a nonprofit conservation group, said, quote, We need to reinvest in our infrastructure, or else every time we have these tropical events, we're going to be harming our watershed, which really hurts our economy. So we're playing with fire. I do think there has been some focus to invest in the infrastructure, but it's not enough. And I think it's important for folks that engage with the water, which is everybody here that lives in the Tampa Bay region, whether directly or indirectly, that they continue to speak up so that this can doesn't get kicked down the road, end quote. Tramble said they haven't heard any reports of fish kills or strong smells in the bay yet, but they are sending a team into Tampa Bay to look for any effects of the recent spillage. And next, Jivo Incorporated and Calumet's Montana Renewables segment both confirmed U.S. Department of Energy loans this past week to fund the construction and expansion of large sustainable aviation fuel production projects. Both companies' projects are products of the DOE's Sustainable Aviation Fuel Grand Challenge, which aims to decarbonize the aviation industry and boost the production of fuel, which reduces life cycle emissions by at least 50% compared to jet fuel made from petroleum. The aviation industry is responsible for 11% of the U.S. transportation sector's emissions and 3.3% of total U.S. emissions. Jivo specifically secured $1.46 billion in conditional financing from the DOE's Loan Programs Office, which it will use to build its Net Zero One project in Lake Preston, South Dakota. Jivo said NZ1 will use 100% U.S. sourced feedstocks to produce about 60 million gallons of sustainable aviation fuel every year. And up next, a new study from Refed in partnership with the Global Methane Hub determined that food waste in the U.S. was responsible for 14% of the country's methane emissions. The report looked at 48 food product types across five supply sectors with 10 destinations. It emphasizes that strategies to reduce upstream emissions are likely to make the greatest immediate impact on methane emissions from food waste. An estimated 2.5 million metric tons of the methane gas associated with food waste comes from production of the food, while about 1.5 million metric tons comes from downstream management and disposal activities like landfilling. Dana Gunders, president of Refed, said, quote, We are trying to paint the picture that when you are throwing out a burger, you are throwing out the upstream emissions and the downstream emissions. We are trying to capture that all together so that people can understand the power of wasted food emissions, end quote. 
And up next, Vision RNG just closed on an aggregate $207 million in project financing with Hasi, an investor in climate solutions. According to the company, the funds will be used to develop renewable natural gas facilities at Ohio landfills run by sustainable waste and recycling service provider Win Waste Innovations. Kevin Johnson, the chief financial officer at Vision RNG, said, quote, Our partnership with Hasi is a major milestone for Vision RNG. This funding enables us to continue moving forward with our ambitious plans to produce more renewable natural gas, ultimately reducing greenhouse gas emissions and supporting the transition to cleaner energy sources, end quote. And just a reminder, Recyclist is a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or you can even set up a personalized presentation by calling 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. Dominion Energy, Virginia's largest utility, filed an update this past week to its 15-year long-term electricity generation plan. The utility's previous planned projection said at the end of that 15-year period, 95% of electricity generation would be pooled from renewable sources. This past week's updated plan calls for about 80% of generation to be spurred by renewables. Critics said that the utility's plan conflicted with the Virginia Clean Economy Act, which passed in 2020 with the goal of decarbonizing Dominion's grid by 2045 by transitioning to renewable generation sources. Ed Bain, the president of Dominion Energy Virginia, said, quote, We are experiencing the largest growth in power demand since the years following World War II. No single energy source, grid solution, or energy efficiency program will reliably serve the growing needs of our customers. But up next, one segment where renewable natural gas could be primed to have even more explosive growth is the long-haul freight market. At the 2024 Management Conference and Exhibition held this past week, a panel of industry experts convened to explore how RNG might revolutionize fleet emissions and what it will take to get there. Matthew Spears, the Executive Director of Global Regulatory Affairs with Cummins Incorporated, explained that with the certification of the X15N engine this past summer, the company believes it's well positioned to meet the increasing environmental, social, and governance pressures that companies are now facing. He expressed optimism about this solution, indicating that Cummins feels confident about its potential in the market saying, quote, renewable natural gas is here today. The engines are here and they're certified to the standards today. So if we want to make improvements to the environment and try to address these climate change issues, we should be taking more advantage of what's available today rather than look 10, 20 years into the future, end quote. And now moving to Los Angeles, the City of Angels is set to award a new contract to Athens Services, which could potentially be worth up to $87.1 million over a five-year period. The contract also has the option for two additional five-year extensions, which could ultimately raise its potential value to $382.9 million over 15 years. The contract would cover the processing and marketing of an estimated 450 tons per day of residential recyclables collected by LA Sanitation and Environment in the East Valley and West Valley watersheds. And lastly, in Kentucky, a representative of the U.S. Department of Agriculture announced over $1 million in federal funding this past week to help rural Kentucky. The two projects announced, funded through the Rural Energy for America program, will help businesses make clean energy improvements 
to their infrastructure. Dr. Tom Carew, the U.S. DOA Rural Development Kentucky State Director, said, quote, I'm proud more and more businesses see the value of making the transition to clean energy, and the projects announced will help lower energy costs and harness a renewable energy source. The Biden-Harris administration continues to invest in rural small businesses and agricultural producers so they can install renewable energy systems and make energy efficiency improvements, both of which lower energy costs, generate new income, and strengthen operational resiliency. End quote. But that will do it for your October 18th, 2024 news roundup brought to you by Recyclist, a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you back here next week for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.